let's talk about Java and PeopleCode. PeopleCode has incredible built-in support for Java through the Get Java class and Create Java Object PeopleCode functions. In fact, PeopleSoft maps many primitive data types between Java and PeopleCode. But a viewer of this channel recently asked if we had any ideas for dealing with Java generics from PeopleCode. And we do. But first, what are generics? Let's say you have a shopping basket and you put eggs and produce and meat and snacks and well, basically anything into that basket. Now, if we need to refer to the items in that basket, we use a generic term such as items. Now, what if we want to restrict the types of items that go into the basket to say, just produce? And that's the point of generics in Java. Java has lots of these basket-like objects such as array list, hash map, et cetera. And the problem is you can insert anything into those lists, but when that something comes out of the list, Java sees it as just an object and no longer has the original properties and methods of the original definition. So if you want to treat an object in its original form, you need to cast it. And at runtime, how can you confirm that the item you pulled out of that generic basket is what you think it is? So generics provide a compile time filter by restricting the types of items that we could insert into that basket, but they also provide a bit of syntactic sugar because we get out of the basket the same data type we put in, so we no longer have to cast. Now that's fantastic for Java, but what about people code? Well, the good news is the generics are just a compiler concern. In other words, and I'm oversimplifying, but you might say generics don't really exist. And that's good news for people code because it basically means we can ignore the concept. So all of that to say, generics aren't really an issue for people code, but here's the issue. What do you do with the object when you pull it out of the basket? Let's take a look at an example. Let's use the Java hash map. So local Java object and map equals create Java object java.util.hash map. And your class names, paths, etc. from Java are case sensitive. Let's make sure that we have what we have, that we've typed it correctly, just in case. We'll go ahead and run this as an app engine locally. And it ended normally, so fantastic. So far, so good, great. Okay, well, let's keep going. So let's go ahead and put something into this hash map. Nothing exciting. How about nmap.put? How about key one? So that's the key for the map. And then how about we insert a Java string into the map? So create Java object, java.lang.string. And the constructor will give it the string, the text that we want to actually create into a Java string. Kind of interesting, right? Because people code will actually do the translation from the Java types to the people code types and back and forth with simple types such as number and string. But I specifically want to use some of the Java methods of the string after it comes back out of that basket to see, is it really a string? And how do we cast from the object will get back out of the basket into the original Java string. Okay, great. And then again, just to make sure we haven't broken something, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, again, so far so good. App engine ended normally. That's a good sign. <laughs> great. Okay, but what is, let, let's do this. How about local Java object and result equals and map dot get key one. Okay, now just for fun, let's print it. And so we'll do,
And because it's already a string, we don't really need to invoke the to the dot to string method of the object, which exists for every object. But just for fun, let's go ahead and keep it in there anyway. And what we're expecting to see in the output file is that string. This is a string. Perfect. Okay. Now, the Java string object has certain methods and properties. Uh, one of those methods is character app. So I'm curious, what data type is, what, what object type is result? Now, it came out of a generic map, so I would actually expect it to be java.lang.object. So let's try this. Message box. And then and what oh that's right, it says this is a string. So if we use character two, whether it's zero base or one based, we'll get an H or or an I. Let's just see what or actually it's gonna be the the character, the code at that location. Let's see what we get. Java method character at not found for class java.lang.object. And see, this is the issue with generics. We put a string into, but as it's coming out, people code is looking at, people software, the interpreter is looking at the get method and it says the generic get method returns an object. It does not return a string. And that's where generics and that syntactic sugar that help with Java so much become a real challenge for people code. What we need to do now is cast the object to a string. And that's the challenge because in Java, we have a cast operator. We don't have a cast operator in people code. So what do we do? We leverage the cast method of the class. Okay, so how about this? Local Java object and string class equals get Java class Java dot lang dot class dot forename java dot lang dot string. So that's going to get us a pointer to a class object in memory. And then we can say let's do let's change the name. It's just new string equals or Java string equals and string class dot cast and then let's change this and we'll run it and now I'm, I'm expecting the character at method to work because I'm expecting the people code interpreter to see it now as a Java string no longer as a Java object. That's amazing. Okay, but wait. The result is a string inside. Even though it's being represented from a people code perspective, what people code sees as an object, inside there, it is a string. And every object has a get class method. So we could actually do it this way. And let's comment these out. We could say local Java object and new string equals and result dot get class dot cast and result. Kind of wild, huh? <laughs> from the result, get its base class, then cast result into from the result. And I'm expecting to get the exact same output this time the character code at. This is so cool. Okay, now I'm using people tools 86007, which happens to be using Java 11. And as we can see, this works in Java 11. Now I've tried this casting approach in various people tools versions and well, some of them worked and some didn't. So basically what I'm saying is this cast approach, your mileage may vary, but it beats the Java reflection alternative. Now the idea for this episode came from a viewer's comment. Do you have something you'd like us to talk about? If so, 
let us know in the comments section. At JSM Pros, we have a whole library of people tools tips like this to share with you. Check it out at jsmpros.com slash all access to get access to all of our recorded courses, videos, activity guides, downloads, everything. And be sure to check out our live events as well. We teach people tools topics like this every week. Or here's an idea. Do you have a group you'd like to train? Give us a call and let's get something scheduled. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.